First, let's start with the brush back and let's start with the Mets, who uh, did a tremendous job last night and really have recovered some after a bad stretch where they allowed the Braves to stick around in the NL East with lots of losses against bad teams with Washington and the Cubs and the Pirates and the Marlins even beat them once, but they bounced back well. They won five in a row, four straight against the hideous Pirates over the weekend. Good performance yesterday. Scherzer, of course, six perfect innings. I'll get to that in a second. And uh, the home run by Alonzo or Burns. That was a big win. The Mets have not played well in Milwaukee in the past. The Braves never lose. The Braves will probably sweep Washington. So as a result, the Mets are going to have to hold serve here uh, and get the Oakland still tied for first place in a loss column in the, uh, in the NL East. Again, it's key for the Mets to be no worse than, you know, they need to be a game ahead going into that weekend in Atlanta. They need to be one up in a loss column because that would enable them to lose two out of three and still control destiny to win the division the last three games of the year because they would have won the season tiebreaker. So that's where I think the Mets need to be. But let's give the Mets credit right now for being in the postseason. They did a – and they can party. Uh, they can celebrate all they want, take all the selfies at the uh, – at uh, Miller Park until the cows come home and drink all the bubbly. Why not? I mean, the Mets – this is not an everyday occurrence for this franchise. I mean, obviously – Last year was bad. Uh, you know, at the end of the previous administration, not a lot of success. 2015 was a very good year. I get that. But I believe they only made the playoffs about six or seven times over the uh, six times over previous ownership. They won two world championships in the last 60 something years. You know, listen, that's better than what the Indians and the, the Guardians, uh, better than what they have done. I understand that. Uh, the Cubs, I understand that. But still, two is not a whole heck of a lot. And you like to do a little better with that. And the Mets have had some Hall of Famers on their team, especially with the pitching department. Uh, and this is a chance now for them. They've been a big-time team all year. They've only been out of first place on two days. One of those days was for 12 hours. Uh, you know, one game in April, one game there about a couple of weeks ago. They bounced back quickly. Uh, they got a lot of resourcefulness. They've had some injuries, too, with DeGrom, Scherzer twice, now Marte. They haven't, it hasn't been, you know, uh, they've had a rough stretch at times, no question about it. They've beaten the Dodgers four out of seven. Not many teams in the sport can say that. So you like that. They got the season series advantage over um, over Atlanta. They have killed the Cardinals. They're five and one against them. So there's a lot of good things that you like about the Mets here in 2022. And I would think that uh, they have a very good chance to carry over that momentum into 2022's postseason. Now, again, the divisional championship is vital. I think they know that. It's I think it's more vital than it is for the Braves. So we shall see how they finish off here in these final whatever they may have. What, five on this road trip? And then I think they have the uh, they have the three games in Atlanta is eight. They got five or six home games. We got about 13, 14 games left. But a very, very good job. And Buck Showalter is a wonderful manager. It was the perfect uh, tonic for what this team needed. There's good chemistry on this ball club. Lindoris had a big year offensively with all the RBIs. Alfonso, you know, listen, he's not going to win the MVP. Goldschmidt will, but let's face it, we know how good he is. They got plenty of good starting pitching. Diaz has been magnificent in that bullpen. Uh, again, they have a lot of karma, which is what I like more than anything else. You can see some magic with that team. Doesn't always correspond to the next level postseason, but sometimes it does, and the Mets have a lot of it. And they'd be dangerous uh, in postseason play. There's no question about it. They'd be dangerous. They'd be more dangerous if they get the Cardinals than if they get the uh, Dodgers in round one, but they will be dangerous. Uh, do I like taking Scherzer out after six innings with a perfect game? 68 pitches. I understand it. I guess he was told before the game you're on a strict pitch count. This is off the oblique. I get that, but I've said this a thousand times. I'm not speaking out of school. This is what hurts baseball. Um, you know, this is where front office stuff and, uh, you know, pitch counts, and nobody knows what this arm scenario with pitch counts is. Anyway, so it kills baseball. You had two terrible football games last night. Minnesota was a blowout. The Bills won 41-7. You had nothing going on in the NFL for a change. And they're getting 30 million people watching the games. There's nothing going on. You mean to tell me if America knew as sports fans that Scherzer's pitching a perfect game in the eighth inning in Milwaukee, somebody wouldn't have flipped the CV set to go put on the game? Hey, Scherzer's pitching. A everybody knows who he is, too. Scherzer's pitching a perfect game. Let's watch. The whole world, I would have. And everybody would have. And I would have flipped. I flip anyway. But everybody would have. Hey, there's a perfect game going on. There's not that many of them in the sport. But baseball, as you know, we've gone through this a thousand times. Joe Ryan had a no-hitter the other day. He's out of the game. We've gone through this a thousand times with these pitchers. Kershaw early in the year in Minnesota. We've gone through this a thousand times. The entertainment aspect of the perfect game is lost because so many of these teams and front offices and managers are afraid they're going to hurt a pitching staff. And as a result of that, you lose a lot of the eyeballs to the TV set 
that spur of the moment channel surf. You, you miss a, I guarantee it, if the world knew that Scherzer at 10 o'clock Eastern time is a perfect game going in the eighth inning, when uh, the Vikings are getting murdered, the Bill game is over, you would have had some, somebody, somebody in America would have switched over, maybe the president, hey, Scherzer's pitching a perfect game, put it on. Somebody would have switched over and watched it. But, I mean, do you blame anybody? Uh, you know, it's the way the sport is. It's unfortunate. Uh, away we go. Get off that. I wanted to make sure I mentioned that because that's true. I'm 100% right. If anybody says I'm wrong, you're, uh, you, you do not get it from a sports fan's perspective. You do not. Timmy Russo in Connecticut would have switched over if he knew Scherzer had a perfect game going in the eighth inning. I promise you. I promise you. And that's what baseball needs more of, not less of. Anyway, the Mets, of course, now in the postseason. Away we go. I love the team. I've thought all year that they have an opportunity to win, the, win it all. I love the two starters at the top of the rotation. Diaz, of course, in the ninth inning. Be a little worried about their offense. You know, they're not a great offensive team. You know, they're resourceful. They put the ball in play. They're not a big home run hitting team. They're not a big offensive team. That would concern me against a big team. And I don't like the seventh and eighth inning in big spots. We know that. And their pitchers don't go long in these games. DeGrom's got to go eight innings in a, in, a, in a world. One thing about DeGrom, everybody tells the world how great DeGrom is. They compare him to Koufax. They compare him to Gibson. Listen, he is for six innings. But you can't compare any of these pitchers today for what these guys did 30 years ago when they don't pitch the big part of the game. They're not in there in the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning. Sure, they're great for six innings. How about the last three with the games are on the line? And in postseason play, the Mets are going to have to stretch it for Scherzer and DeGrom to go eight innings because that's their best chance to go win it all is to rely on news two horses. We'll see if they do that as it moves along. But postseason play for the Mets, now we see the eye on the division. That will be a fascinating last couple of weeks in the sport. The Guardians will be in Chicago today to start a three-game series against the White Sox. They lead by four in the loss column as far as the American League Central is concerned. And the Guardians, of course, have played very well here for a long period of time. They had 13 games over 500. They destroyed the Twins. They killed the Twins. That's going to take a long time for the Twins to get over that. The Guardians own the Twins like the Yankees own the Twins. Seven of eight. They embarrassed them. They sent them home yesterday, 11-4. A game they needed that was brought up uh, by Alana and uh, Mandy Bell yesterday who said they wanted to go to Chicago. If they did get swept, they would still be in first place. And now that's the case based on a loss column. The advantage that the Guardians has, they've said this, even if they do get swept, we never one thing about the Guardians. They have six against Kansas City in their ballpark to close the year. White Sox have six of the Twins who might be pesky to knock them off. Three in San Diego that might be playing for something. White Sox got a little tricky schedule and the Guardians do not. And remember, to say the, the White Sox who have been up and down all year are all of a sudden going to sweep the, I don't buy it uh, because Bieber's pitched in the last game of that series. McKenzie's pitched well. Guess with the line earlier in the week. I think the Guardians will win at least one game. I know Dylan Cease is going tonight, but he'll win at least one game. Lance Lynn's going to pitch and then Cueto. But I do think the Guardians will get one. If they get one, they'll be three up with about 12 to go, six of which are against the Royals in their ballpark. Guardians are going to win the division. White Sox, they're still alive, but the Guardians are going to win the division.